Hi, my name is Aaron Lindstam, a polar explorer and motivational speaker. It's review day! Today I'm putting on my cinematographer hat and we're going to talk about studio speaker isolation from your desk. How cool is that? Check it out. little on-stage ASP 3001 studio monitor speaker isolation foams are incredible. Now you're saying, what the, the what? Okay, so here's the thing. Okay, you can see, let me turn this so you can see my speaker here, and I'm going to have to crouch down a bit. All right, so you want to go professional, right? Okay, I'm going to have to tilt this up. You want to go professional. And you said, okay, I'm, I'm looking at some headphones and I'm tired of trying to edit my video on earbuds or using earbuds. So I needed some computer speakers. So I got, went down to the local electronic store and I got these cool little Tweety speakers. And it sounds like, it sounds like a mouse is really trying to talk and be dramatic, but really it just sounds like this. All right. So you do that and you're like, oh man, I, I need to step up. So you spend 50 whole dollars getting this computer set up and you, you set the speakers on there and it's supposed to be 300 watts of ever loving power and then he still sounds like this right and even then on your setup you'll notice with those cheap computer speakers you just bought that as they sit on the desk you'll get some weird rattling and acoustic vibration and you think well that's probably the cheap computer speakers I bought. Then you start surfing around like, okay, I need to get a lot more serious about the sound out of my system. Not, not because I enjoy music, but because I'm editing audio and video and I like I'm working on a YouTube video right here. And you think, dang, I really need to step it up. I need to get these studio monitor speakers. What's that? And then it becomes this, whole drama of well I, I need these monitor speakers and then I need XLR cables and what what are XLR cables and then how come they can't just hook up to my computer and why do I have to buy them individually near <laughs> your head explodes now once you begin to go down this process you realize that there's an entire world you had no clue about when you're getting into this Hopefully you have a friend to kind of help you. Otherwise you'll be on YouTube like me or read, reading forums trying to figure out what the heck to do about hooking a professional studio monitor speaker up and how to use it. Now, these studio monitor speakers, GBL 305s. Now, uh, by the way, full disclosure, I am not sponsored by OnStage. I am not sponsored by JBL. I'm just telling you about the products I use so you can be better informed. I, I don't receive any money for them. I wish I did, but then that would make my review not legitimate, right? So all of a sudden you've invested in these speakers and they're not terribly expensive, but after you're used to the inexpensive little computer speakers, you're like hundreds of dollars each? Are you kidding me? Yeah, professional gear is not cheap because it's that much better. When you, you think, oh, it, it, it's not that much better. Believe me, I've used the cheapest to the cheap to like Adam A7Xs where, oh my gosh, that's incredible. And th th there's this whole spectrum you have to go through. But when you buy this speaker and you think, man, that's incredible. It has enough power in here where the acoustic energy starts to drive through my desk and even though it doesn't rattle and vibrate sometimes, you can actually hear the sound energy coming from the speaker into the desk and re-radiating from your desk. How crazy is that, right? You can actually have enough energy in these speakers to actually make your desk into kind of a pseudo speaker, which is a huge problem. Now, then you say, well, now what do I do, Lens Dow? You're killing me. Bum, ba, da, dum. So when you start looking at professional monitor kits, you're not gonna wanna spend a dime more because these are expensive already. These are also heavy already. And I've gotta hook up and I've gotta 
by the, uh, the studio monitor controller and the XLR cables. But then you notice, hey, these speakers are sold in a kit with some sort of audio speaker control -y deal, right? I mean, it's like uh, all this and that. And then they come out with these foam bricks. Like, why in the world do I need a foam brick for my super huge speaker? Oh, funny thing you might ask. So, let me show you. On the bottom of the speaker are these tiny little rubber feet. Now, which puts your speaker exactly one or two, maybe two millimeters above the surface of your desk. So, even though the speaker is isolated from your desk, theoretically, acoustically, it's really not. These things are here really for symbolism. These speakers, whether it's JBLs, the Yamahas, the Atoms, the wh whoever else, they actually expect you to purchase these foam blocks. Why is that? Because these speakers are powerful enough to where they can drive your desk, actually making the desk re-radiate acoustical energy and give you a different sound, one that you didn't actually have happen. Now, when you think, oh, it's a big deal. Well, when you look at your favorite music star, or your actor, or actress, or whatever, that audio utterly matters. You can kind of deal with a grainy, kind of pixelated picture, but when the audio is terrible, horrible audio is just that, horrible. You can deal with grain, you can deal with bad exposure, you can kind of deal with shaky video, but you utterly cannot deal with bad audio. Have you ever had an out of tune radio station where I am, and then it comes back in, and, and what happens? Everybody in the vehicle gets ticked off, ah, change the channel. Humans cannot handle irritating sound. We just can't. Why? What is the most grating sound ever? Fingernails and a chalkboard! <laughs> Universal, right? Same thing with this. If you are going to spend the money to get this very professional and expensive high-end speaker, or a really expensive speaker, you must, must, must purchase these foam blocks. Now, Interestingly, when you say, hey, what size do I buy? This is a five inch speaker. It looks huge, but that's a five inch diameter main driver speaker. The link I've got below to these on stage ASP 3001, that's actually small. And you might say small, yeah, trust me. When you get the five inch speaker and you put this thing on here, like this, let me tilt the camera down. There you go. Now, for me, my particular setup, because my desk is a little low, this tilt down I don't like because that sound tends to skip and come back up at me. So I, even though it's probably a big old violation of acoustics, I actually prefer to have the speaker set up where it is actually pointing upwards. And you can see that there. Let me see if I can zoom in and I'll show you. Let me move my trackpad. And right, we'll zoom in here just to show you that. There you go. So you can see that this actually has a slope. Okay, there you go. And whether you want to put your speakers facing downward or upward, you totally can. So that foam brick there actually gives you the option of placing your speaker either upwards facing or downwards facing. Now, the, the little stopper on here that they come with, all right, I don't want to ding the speaker. I don't really need because the speakers are heavy enough, it doesn't scoot away. And that's just my particular acoustic setup is I prefer the speakers just facing up. So initially you buy the speakers, you think it's great. Hey, there's a little bit of rattler, the sound's weird. Hey, let, let's go get a paper towel. You put it under the speaker. Ah, oh, there's no effect. Then you think, no, 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 I don't want to spend the extra money. These are cheap, folks. Link below, check it out. Super cheap. Then, oh, I'm going to get a dish towel, and I'm going to put that under my speaker. Now, 
you you just spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars plus on your audio gear, if not thousands. You spend thousands, if not several thousands, on your computer. And then you're not going to spend the extra money on something like this? What are you thinking? When you have to go and you're going to go for this, you got to go all the way. So I highly recommend these guys. They're perfect for my use. They fit these speakers, the 5-inch JBLs, just fine without problems. I haven't had a complaint. They serve the purpose. It is a foam block, I know but they have just the right tilt so everything works properly. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a Polar Explorer, motivational speaker, and filmmaker. Yeah, that sounds more impressive in my head than it probably does out there. Please like and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Just hit the little subscribe button. If you need the links below to the, the onstage foam or anything else I've talked about, hit the little arrow. It'll drop down with the text. And you can hit those links and go check them out, and there are links to Amazon there. Please support my channel on Venmo, PayPal, and Patreon to keep it going. Thank you very much for watching.